so while we were discussing roots in the last subtopic we kept saying that if the x axis lies below the graph there are no real roots we never confidently went ahead and said there are no roots we kept saying there are no real roots so are there unreal roots is there something called as unreal roots what is happening in the case when d is less than 0 the case where we get the graph here and the x axis below where the x axis is not cutting the graph this is when we said there are no real roots right and this was a case we said where d is less than 0 now what is the problem if d is less than 0 if you go back to the quadratic formula your root is given by x is minus b plus or minus root d by 2a correct now what happens when d is negative you need to find the root of a negative number can you tell me what is the square root of minus 9 we don't know an answer right because plus 3 the square is plus 9 Minus three, the square is again plus nine. So when do we get a minus nine? It's not possible to get minus nine as the square of any number, right? Square of any number, at least any number that we know of so far, is always positive, which is why we said, okay, it does not exist in real numbers. There are no real roots. Forget it. But now, are there some real numbers which are not real, right? Some other type of numbers. As and when we encounter a problem that you know we cannot solve it, we come up with new numbers, right? Is it that you know maths was generated when centuries ago when the first person was born he got a huge book saying okay this is math these are all the numbers and this is all there is to it it doesn't work that way right we kept inventing things as we went forward correct so we started with natural numbers because we had to count objects right i have one apple i have two apples three apples great so we invented 1 2 3 4 going on up to infinity because i could have infinite objects Then what did we do? We realized that oh, what if I have nothing? How do I represent nothing? So we came up with a zero. Zero represents nothing. Very nice. Now till this point in time, historically, even negative numbers did not make sense because what does it mean that I have minus one apple? I cannot have less than zero apples, right? I have either nothing or I have something. How can I have less than nothing? But then mathematically, when they were trying to solve problems, they encountered places where they required negative numbers, right? So we came up with minus one, minus two, and now we can ascribe a meaning to that also, right? Suppose you give me some apples, and then I return, and I'm left with minus one apple. It can mean that I owe you one apple, right? If my bank balance is minus five hundred rupees, it means that I owe the bank five hundred rupees. Negative sign over there, in real life, can mean you owe something. so we started accepting negative numbers they also came up to first mean nothing right then came about fractions till now everything was integers now what if i suddenly have only one apple and i need to distribute it amongst the two of you i need to cut it so then came the concept of half or the concept of fractions and so we came up with rational numbers great so until a point they thought perfect rational numbers cover everything nothing else is required then what happened the pythagoreans were obsessed with triangles they loved drawing right angle triangles and isosceles right angle triangles even more than that right what could be better than symmetry so when they were trying to draw a triangle they had an isosceles triangle right angle triangle with this side one and this side one now there was no number by which they could measure the hypotenuse what is the hypotenuse root 2 right root of 1 squared plus 1 squared root 2 because root 2 is not a rational number right so they didn't have any number with which they could measure this diagonal that is when they realized that okay there are some other types of numbers also and then they decided to call them irrational numbers root 2 root 3 root 5 and so on were all pi irrational numbers correct they encountered pi when they were trying to see what is the ratio between the circumference of a circle and its diameter that's when they came up with pi so as and when we encounter situations where we don't have an answer where we don't have a way to express it we just invent a new term math is nothing but a language right so we started with natural numbers then we invented the zero we invented negative numbers we invented rational we invented irrational now we are again stuck at square root of minus 9 now if i write the square root of minus 9 as square root of minus 1 into square root of 9 then square root of 9 i know is going to be The only thing I'm left with is square root of minus one, which I don't know what it is. So they decided to call it i, call it an imaginary number. Now even i has just like I said minus one means I owe you something. It has a representation in the physical world, right? Similarly, i can also have a representation in the physical world. We'll see more about it in complex numbers. For now, we'll call root of minus one as i simply because it's solving our problems, right? Like putting a minus sign before one solved our problems when we were dealing with negative numbers. So we call this i. Now square root of minus nine becomes three i. This i solves all our problems where d is negative. Let's say d was minus thirteen, 
right? Root d will be root minus 13. You can again write it as root of minus 1 into root of 13. So it will become i root 13. So you just put an i and you convert the d to a positive number, from a negative number to a positive number, right? And this i is nothing but called the imaginary number. It's called the imaginary number. These roots are called complex roots. See, if a number is purely i, like plus or minus 3i is purely an imaginary number. When you have a real plot plus an imaginary part, we call it a complex number, right? So our root was minus b plus or minus root d by 2a, right? Or I can write it as minus b by 2a plus or minus root d by 2a. Now, root d is going to be imaginary, right? Root d is going to be i something. So this part is imaginary. The first part minus b by 2a is anywhere real. Right? All our coefficients are real. So it's a real part plus an imaginary part. That is why we call it a complex number. And these complex numbers, just like irrational numbers, will always occur in pairs. Because you have plus or minus, right? You have plus or minus. So if d was minus 9, you will get 3i here. So one term will be something plus 3i. One term will be something minus 3i. Correct? So they'll always occur in pairs. Just like irrational numbers, complex numbers will, complex roots will also always occur in pairs. Now, can we actually see these complex roots? Can we visualize these complex roots? Just as we visualize real roots, right? X-axis cut the graph. Is there a way to visualize complex roots? The way typically complex numbers are visualized is just a very small two-minute intro to that. We'll see it again in detail in complex numbers. You have one real axis and have one imaginary axis. So suppose I have a complex number 1 plus 3i. On the real axis, I want 1. So I'll take 1 here. On the x axis, I want 3. So I'll take 3 on this axis. So I get 1 plus 3i over here. Right? It's very simple. Like It is like saying x coordinate is 1 and y coordinate is 3. As simple as that. Right? Real coordinate, complex coordinate. So that's how you can plot a complex number. So there's absolutely no problem in plotting complex numbers. One axis, instead of being real, we make it an imaginary axis. So let's see now if we can actually plot a complex number on a graph. Let me take an equation where we're going to get d negative. Let's say we have an equation y minus 3 equals x minus 1 the whole squared. What will be the vertex of this parabola? First of all, will it be upward facing or downward facing? Upward, right? Because it's positive. The coefficient of this term is positive. We normally write it as y minus k equals a into x minus h the whole square, right? a is positive, in this case plus 1, so it will be facing upwards. What will be the vertex? 1 comma 3, right? h comma k, so 1 comma 3. So that means the x-axis is going to lie somewhere here. This is upwards. Now, if you actually try to find d in this equation, if you try to find d here, if we simplify this, we'll get y is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 4. We'll get y is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 4. So if you find d, b squared minus 4ac, you'll get d is equal to minus 12. Or i root 12. Correct? Root minus 12, we are going to write it as root minus 1 into root 12, which will be i root 12. So this part is imaginary, which is why this particular graph is going to have complex roots. Now, can we actually visualize these complex roots? Why am I not able to find the roots on the graph? Because this d is minus 12. Instead of that, if it was root 12, root plus 12, it would have been very easy to find the roots, right? So what are the roots of this equation? If you substitute everything, if you put minus b by 2a plus or minus root of d by 2a, you will get the roots as 2 plus or minus i root 12 by 2. Correct? Now, because it's complex, we are not able to see it here. Now, what if I take the same graph and turn it around? Why do I want to turn it around? Because the moment I turn this graph around, I see that it's cutting my x-axis. So, can I turn it around? Very easy. We know that we just have to make the a negative, right? So, this graph was y minus 3 equal to x minus 1 the whole square. We'll make this graph y minus 3 equal to minus of x minus 1 the whole square. Then the graph will look like this. Now you can find the two roots, right? These are the two roots. These are the two roots. How do we relate these two roots with our equation? How do we relate these two roots with our equation? This is nothing but this line. If I draw a line at the vertex, this is nothing but minus b by 2a. This is minus b by 2a. Here you are adding root d by 2a. And here you are subtracting root d by 2a. So this distance is root d by 2a. This distance is root d by 2a. Now, the beautiful thing here is, for both of these graphs, the root d is exactly the same. The only difference is here d was negative, here d is positive. The absolute value is exactly the same. So here, you will actually, if you solve it, you will get the roots as 2 plus or minus root 12 by 2. Instead of i root 12 by 2, you will simply get root 12 by 2. 
amazing right try solving it simplify it this is nothing but y is equal to minus x squared plus 2x plus 2 y is equal to minus x squared plus 2x plus 2 find the value of d you will get root 12 correct so the roots here are 2 plus or minus root 12 by 2 which means that what did i do first i took minus b by 2a for my upper graph also minus b by 2a is the same correct which is nothing but 1 right this point is nothing but 1 for growth both the graphs it is 1 now here i need to add root 12 by 2 which i added on this side and this side correct of this graph got this point on the x axis i added root 12 on this side and this side now there i need to for the upper graph i need to add i root 12 correct i need to add i root 12 now i don't have a complex axis here can we create one we already have two real axis let's take one more axis in the third dimension let's take a z axis and let's make this the imaginary axis now from here if i want to measure i root 12 I, by 2 i'll measure it in this direction right it will be the same distance it will be the same distance in that direction same distance in that direction and this direction so it is as good as taking this parabola taking this inverted parabola and turning it by 90 degrees turning it anti clockwise by 90 degrees then the two points where it cuts are my two roots the two point where it cuts how do you see these roots in 3d right if we just move this plane for a sec if we just move this plane and make it in 2d you will clearly be able to see how this is 2 plus i root 12 by 2 and 2 minus i root 12 by 2 got it so this actually i the significance of the imaginary number is nothing but an anti clockwise rotation of 90 degrees interesting you will see that in complex number that's why after taking the graph this way we just rotated it anti clockwise by 90 degrees and got our answer so that's how you can visualize the roots not as easy as visualizing the real roots but you can visualize complex roots as well by taking a complex plane because you know that this distance is nothing but root d by 2a and in both the cases the only difference between their roots is the i being there and the i not being there so instead of measuring it along the real axis we measured the same distance along the imaginary axis that's how you'll visualize the roots so in case of d less than 0 there are no real roots it's not that there are no roots there are roots but those roots are complex and they occur in pairs so both the roots are complex